Hello and welcome to a Nendroid review for Nendroid number 788, Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist. So this is an Nendroid I've had for a couple of years and kind of not opened until now, obviously. Uh, so I got this in 2020 and I want to say that was a re-release. Now I'm not sure if that was the first re-release or the second, I know quite popular Nendroids do tend to get re-releases. So it might have come out a few times before that, I don't know, because Full Metal Alchemist is a fairly old series now. But anyway, today we're going to take a look at this Nendroid. So first of all, we'll look at the box real quick, uh, just to give you all a look. So this is number 788, I think I mentioned that. Uh, on the side, we've got some of the poses. We've got kind of a sort of neutral uh, stand showing off his uh, automail arm there. We've got a sort of more... Uh, a more battle-ready one, where he turns his arm into a blade. We've also got the symbol there, the, uh, the, uh... No, that's not the blood seal symbol, is it? That's the crest on Alphonse's arm, I believe. On the back, we've got, obviously, his transmutation clap. Uh, I can't quite remember what it's called, but, you know, when he... He doesn't need a transmutation circle, because he's seen the truth. We've got, uh, Angry Owl which is, uh, sorry, Angry Ed, not Al, which is very cute. And we've got him and Al, who I do have, so keep an eye out, because I will be putting out the Alphonse review as well. But I thought I'd do it in separate reviews, because, you know, people may want to view them differently. Um, we've got a more natural fighting pose, without that being obviously his ultimate arm. And, ah, cool, and we've got the kind of ground alchemy kind of thing he does. So anyway, I'm going to go open this up now, and then we'll take a look at what's inside. Alright, I have everything arranged out in front of me. Now, I'll explain in a second why Ed isn't actually on the stand. So we'll go through what's in the box in all. So we'll start with the obvious ones. Got a standard Nendroid base with the, uh, with the sort of movable arm kind of support thing there. Also got a spare, I think there's a head joint, right? Because the joint is way too big for any other part of it. That always comes with Nendroids usually as well. Um, and then we'll take a look at Ed actually first, and then we'll get on to all of the different accessories. So as with the rest of my figure reviews and stuff, we'll start from the bottom, work our way up. So we've got you know the 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 bottom of ed isn't all that interesting i guess it's sort of he's got his cute little stubby black legs and brown boots now on the side is um obviously you can't see into the pocket unfortunately but we do have the chain for his pocket watch which is uh, very obviously significant to the series it's got that date the important date on along with um proof that he's a state alchemist so then the reason I didn't put him on the display is round back we do have uh, his hoodie with that logo on, uh, which is very cool. I I don't think it's the Elric family crest, is it? Maybe? I read the manga like last year, but I don't remember the significance of the, the, the symbol. I just know it's kind of the series symbol, basically. But we got that and we got the like uh, folded out hood. Reason I didn't want to put the stand on is the stand would just obscure it fully. Um, so, you know, it's not like super, super high detail, but the, I think, you know, the point of an android is not to see it in super high detail. So then we've got his, uh, like, under shirt and stuff as well up there, along with the belt buckle. Everything's very detailed. I, I said the print on the back wasn't that detailed, but it, it's pretty decent. Uh, then we've got his gloved hands and his... Uh, I do love the billowy cape as well. You, you guys know that I do like a billowy cape. Uh, along with his white gloves, which do have a little bit of colour grading, I want to say, or maybe I'm just seeing things, but it's kind of got a bit of tinge of blue and stuff as well. But obviously his arms are pausable and stuff, and his hands are movable. And then on up to the face, so this is the default face, I haven't changed anything yet, but I will be in a second. We've got his golden eyes, which he is well known for. And then on up to his hair, which... Again, I'm actually really impressed with, because from the package, it just looked like it was a kind of one-tone yellow, which is fine. But this has some gradients going on, like, he, you know, he's got golden hair, not yellow, um, and that really works here. Like, you can tell the sort of, like, shades to it and everything, and, uh, yeah, the... I mean, hair tends to be really good on androids anyway, but this guy's, like, really got it. 
Um, everything looks fantastic. Like the, there's the sheeting really adds depth where you know sort of like unless you had really really high quality molding you wouldn't really get. So yeah, overall honestly really impressed with this guy. He uh, he is looking very dramatic. So I'm going to put him there and then oh, we'll go over to so he's got two different face plates. This is the angry face plate. Very cute. Not one I'll probably display him with uh, unless I've got like a specific setup. I know the Allen Android has a few uh, few different kind of setups as well, so maybe, you know, it'll be funny, I'll change it out. The good thing with this, actually, is because it's not, it's not specific enough um, to Ed, you could really put this on any Nendroid who's kind of, like, got the right skin complexion. Um, and, it would, you know, it, it, would, it would kind of work, I think. And then his other one, which is the kind of um, smug grin. I'll probably be displaying him with this, maybe, or his neutral face. But again, very cool. I like it. He's got the gold eyes and everything. So next up, we've got a bent leg. Uh, so I think... Oh, sorry. And this that way? Yeah. No, maybe it's the other way. I can't remember. But this is, this is one of his legs, kind of... Yeah, I think it's there, sort of like... If you, uh, I'm not even sure what pose it is that would use that, but there's there's one of the poses I'm sure where one of the legs is meant to go forward, and you've also got the default kind of one for um, his wall summoning thing, which we'll get into in a second. See a little bit better there. The sort of his um, his pocket watch is in his pocket somewhere there. Very cool. That's uh, you know this is his kneeling stance, and of course to go with that, we've got both hands, the kind of uh, clasp thing there, where, uh, you know, he can form that transmutation circle with his own body. Um, and then we've also got, for that, two transmutation parts, uh, which I think you attach to the arms, I want to say. You kind of slide these through the kind of electric gauntlets, basically. Um, so I'll give them a go. I hope they're not too finicky. Uh, there may not be something I, you know, display him with, or maybe I will. So this is his kind of ground summoning alchemy kind of uh, effect part and stuff. Very cool. Very nice. Fairly, you know, fairly straightforward and simple, but, you know, it does the job. And then the last two things is we've got his automail arm, which is cool. That's just sort of... Uh, very, very detailed. It's got a little bit of a rip there as well. So, because he did rip it off in that battle, if I'm correct. Oh, and it's also got. There you go. I, I didn't even realize. For some reason, I thought it was just like a straight, you know, a, a, um, a non articulate. Oh, no, it is articulated. Never mind. Okay. That's even cooler. For some reason, I just thought it wasn't. And, you know, that I'd be fine with that. But yeah. Very cool auto mail arm. It's got all the little details and stuff in it as well. That is very nice. And then we've got the. Okay, so I'm guessing the auto mail arm. Ooh. Uh, oh, I think that's. Ah, okay. No, no, no. That, that's, that's a uh, peg to stop up the hole, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, can confirm. This is a clear plastic part, the sort of like. You take out uh, some parts of an Android come with these, and others don't, and it's always a little bit confusing because it looks to me like there's dried glue on like a snapped piece. I'm like, where the hell did that come from? But no, this is a it's a part you kind of pop out like that. Um, but yeah, and this much like oh, I'll put it back later. Much like the auto mail arm is uh, nicely detailed. You've got the blade kind of part of his auto mail hand there and stuff, and his little palm. So, right, there's a lot to play with, so I'm going to go off now and take quite a few photos of different uh, modifications, you know, using all of these parts and stuff, and then I'll be back to give a wrap-up. Alright, I am back. 
So I tried to arrange him in various poses, as you see from like the side of the boxes and stuff, along with kind of thinking up my own poses. And honestly, I'm very impressed with this Nendroid. Unlike the others that I have, this is a bit more action-y. Uh, he's a bit more of a posing kind of Nendroid. Some Nendroids are just like straight up cute and you know, there's one or two cute poses. He is more of a sort of kinetic action-y guy, which doesn't always work great with Nendroid, but I think it works pretty well with him. I'm going to be displaying him in this setup with the Automail Blade, um, his transmutation palm and the sort of transmutation energy thing. But, you know, I might mix it up. Um, I do have one slight criticism, which is with his Automail arm, further up near the bicep pops off quite easily. Um, but the the part that you swap out for the regular non-bladed automail thing is further down, which means that when you're swapping the parts out for the automail arm, sometimes further up will just pop off, and it's a very small part, so keep that in mind if you do buy this Nendroid, because uh, it is a very small part, and obviously you can't, you know, really replace it. But overall, though, I am very impressed with him. He comes with a lot of options. A lot of uh, potential as well, especially when you throw in the Alphonse Nendroid as well. There's a lot of, you know, I, I, I imagine, I haven't opened them yet, but I imagine there's lots that you could do with the two. And yeah, overall, very pleased with this. I love Full Metal Alchemist. It is easily in my top five anime of all time. I've seen, you know, 2003, Brotherhood, and I've read all of the manga, so... I'm quite into it, and I'm just glad I have, you know, some Full Metal Alchemist uh, kind of representation in terms of figures and stuff. Yeah, um, and on that topic, I will be putting out the Alphonse review in a day or two after this video, so keep an eye for that. And I will obviously also leave a playlist for the other Nendroids I've reviewed on the channel previously. But with all that said, I will let you get on with it. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've got this uh, or the Alphonse one. I think they've made a Hawkeye and Roy Mustang as well, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video, and until then, goodbye.